as lawmakers in California work to tackle the state's more than $26 billion budget deficit, one group is laying out an idea that could pull in more than a billion dollars. A pro-marijuana group has launched a TV and ad vacation ad to legalize and tax the drug. Take a look. Health care and police are inevitable due to California's budget crisis. Even our state parks could be closed. But the governor and legislature are ignoring millions of Californians who want to pay taxes. We're marijuana consumers. Instead of being treated like criminals for using a substance safer than alcohol, we want to pay our fair share. Taxes from California's marijuana industry could pay the salaries of 20,000 teachers. Isn't it time? Hmm. Well, their efforts could be going up in smoke as some stations refuse to air the commercial. Calvina Fay is the executive director of the Drug Free America Foundation, and Rob Campia is the executive director of the Marijuana Policy Project. Good morning, the two of you. Thanks so much for being here. Calvina, let me start with you. You listened to that commercial. What are your thoughts? My initial thoughts are it's voodoo economics. It doesn't make sense. Uh, they're estimating a billion dollars in tax revenue. First of all, I think that's a faulty number. Uh, you got people growing marijuana in their backyard, in their house. These people are not going to be paying taxes. There's no way to police it. There's no way to determine, you know, who's growing what. And secondly, in 2005, it cost over $44 billion to deal with the societal cost related to substance abuse. There's no way they're going to generate enough tax revenue to pay for the additional costs that they would create by making the drug problem worse. And there's not anybody that would argue that if you legalize and normalize drug use, you have more drug users. So it just doesn't make sense economically. Rob, how do you respond? Well, it's not like we're talking about introducing a new drug into society. Um, marijuana has been prohibited for 72 years, but yet 100 million Americans have used marijuana in their lives. 25 million have used it in the last year, 15 million have used it in the last month. So marijuana is here, it's here to stay, and the question is, should it be drug cartels and drug dealers that are getting the profits, or should it be legitimate businesses that get the profits? Should it be taxed or not taxed as it currently is? What we say is, prohibition has failed, it's time for a new approach, let's take it off the streets and let's regulate it. Calvina? Well, first of all, prohibition hasn't failed. In the last few years, we have had a tremendous decrease. We actually, since 2001, had a 24 percent decrease in the number of uh, people using drugs. So it's not a failure. But again, how do you regulate it? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's so easy for people to grow it in their backyard, in their home. Uh, we have grow houses all over this country where people are growing it. These people are not going to voluntarily come forward and say, oh, I want to pay my taxes on it. Besides, you overlook the fact that we have powerful drug cartels out there that are peddling drugs. These folks are not law-abiding citizens. They're not legitimate business people, and they're not going to give up their turf that they're making so much money on. Um, sure they will. To make it I mean, legal and make it easy for them to do it, you facilitate drug trafficking along with human trafficking, weapons trafficking, all of that stuff is intertwined. Okay, Rob. I don't think we want to make that legal. Look, we, we have alcohol that's taxed and regulated in our society, even though we all understand that alcohol has its problems. Uh, you don't see drug cartels uh, growing vast quantities of illegal grapes up in the uh, forests of Northern California. It's because people who want to have a vineyard or want to sell alcohol or want to distribute it have a legal way of doing so and they pay their fair share of taxes. So. If you just look at how alcohol works in our society, yes, there are problems, but it's regulated and the drug dealers aren't peddling alcohol on street corners or growing uh, large uh, quantities of, of grapes up in Northern California and trashing our national forests. So I'm not talking about imagining a new system that we've never seen in this country before. I'm saying let's treat marijuana similarly to alcohol. The advantage of marijuana over alcohol, by the way, is that marijuana is vastly safer than alcohol. It's impossible to overdose on marijuana and it's impossible to become well, physically let's, addicted let's, to marijuana. Let's hop back, though, Calvina, into the budget issue here, because right now you guys are facing a critical budget deficit, over $26 billion, and time is running out. Some suspect that a tax on, on, uh, on marijuana would equate to a billion dollars. Is it enough to make up for this massive shortfall? Is it a legitimate idea? It absolutely is not. Look at what substance abuse does as far as cost in society. About 60% um, of everybody out there using drugs is involved 
and abusing children. Uh, you, you look at the number of kids that are neglected. You look at uh, sev about 70% of our kids that are in foster care are there because of substance abuse. Uh, these costs would only go higher and higher, and it's a, it's a bill that we're paying, not to mention the uh, increase in the number of impaired drivers that would be on the highway. See, that's a big difference in alcohol and, and um, marijuana. Most people, and I'm not saying that alcohol is a harmless drug, but most people that consume alcohol intentionally do not get drunk, whereas everybody that smokes a joint does it for the specific purpose of getting high. Do we want to increase the number of people who can freely use well, uh, and use more often and be on our Rob, highways driving with us? Rob, I, I presume that you would disagree with it. It's not just about getting high. It's used in largely for medicinal purposes for a lot of people who are talking about it in the state of California as well, right? Well, I mean, sure, there are some people who use to get high. There are others who use to relax. There are others who use it for medicinal purposes. It's the same thing with alcohol. Some people like to relax in the evening with a glass of wine or two. Uh, some people like to relax in the evening by smoking a little marijuana. Uh, the difference is that marijuana is a lot safer for you, and it's not associated with a lot of these other horrible things that Calvin is talking about. You notice her language. She keeps talking about substance abuse in our society, the cost of substance abuse. She's not talking about marijuana specifically. Of course there are costs associated with alcohol abuse and tobacco abuse and cocaine abuse in our society, but you don't see those same kinds of costs with marijuana in our society. So I really don't like how she's sort of dumping marijuana in with all these other drugs, all of which are far more harmful, if not deadly, than marijuana. All right, guys, we have to leave it there. Kelvin and Rob will continue to keep an eye on this. I know it's a contentious issue. We appreciate you both joining us. By the way, I do want to make a programming note that later this morning, Tom Sullivan is